my name is Ramon Ray, publisher of zoneofgenius.com. And you might not be watching this video or hearing this audio. So if you're not, it frankly doesn't matter. But if you are hearing this, then I decided to put the raw conversation, raw meaning unedited, just what we're doing, in addition to the blog post up so you can know all things there is to know about. And I put it in quotes, but we're talking to an expert here, so I probably will remove the quotes, but all things there is to know about. I'm just going to, at the highest level, book publishing, book marketing, a conversation on that with Portia Mystique Steele, who is with your brand again, Portia? The C CEO author. The CEO <laughs> author. I have in my mind the other thing I said, my own book, Celebrity CEO, yes. the CEO author. And Portia, before we dive in, tell us how we can find you, what you do, who you serve. Tell all those main things and repeat your website address at least, I was going to say 37 times, it's a bit excessive. How about at least three times? Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Portia Mystique Steele. I'm an award-winning book coach, TEDx speaker, independent book publishing expert, and I am the CEO and founder of Mystique Rose Publishing Services. I help business owners and executives combine their story and their wisdom to publish highly impactful books that generate income, influence, and elevate them to thought leadership. You can learn all about me at PortiaSteel.com. Portia, spelled like the car, Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E, I love it. What a, what a fantastic example of just sharing. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. So Portia, let's dive into it. Um, I guess uh, a friend of mine recently, his name is Glenn Lundy. He's the founder of a community on Clubhouse called Breakfast with Champions, by the way. He's thinking of doing his book. And he said, Ramon, I'm not sure if I should do the book self-publish and or, and again, you're the expert. So always feel free, uh, Portia, to reframe my question. No problem. But I said, I don't know if I should do it self-publish and or if I even need to have my book on Amazon or not. Curious, what would you tell them? Again, question is, should I even just skip Amazon entirely? Nothing to do with Amazon? And or should I self-publish it and kind of have it in his garage with his like 12 million kids and they just ship out 10,000 copies? So walk us through what you think he was asking, if you heard it before, what you would say, and feel free to reframe the question. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a really good question. And that is what most people ask. Um, I answer depending on the person's community size. Okay. How big is your community? Because that will determine how you want to publish. Glenn is freaking huge. Okay. His community, 800% is ridiculous. So Glenn is in a space where he actually doesn't need a platform like Amazon, which we know it as KDP, which is Kindle Direct Publishing. He doesn't need a platform like that to sell his book. He could sell his book exclusively through his website and still make a huge difference because there's a bunch of people who follow him, who know him, who trust and like him. So he could do really great that way. Now, the reason most people use Amazon, it's because if you want to reach an audience who don't already know, like, and trust you, it's really great to have a platform that people trust to buy from. And as we know, Amazon is the second largest search engine in the world, second only to Google. So people are always looking for things there. So if Glenn's book could come up in that space, that could be really powerful for him. The only issue with that is that Amazon takes a pretty big cut, right? They take anywhere between 30 to 70% on every book that you sell. So I am always down for the influencers or the major executives who have that platform to sell exclusively through your website. You maintain rights, you maintain royalty, and you are free to add whatever you want in that package when somebody buys from you, whether it's a bookmark or a handwritten letter, or maybe you sign a copy, all that fun stuff. I love it. So to repeat what I'm hearing, and that was such great nuggets, is that someone who's maybe not known, just starting out-ish, you know, I know there's a lot of variables here, you'd probably tilt them towards Amazon or some other platform there. They could be losing out by not being on there. But somebody, you know, Oprah Winfrey called you up, yo, girl, listen, I'm thinking of another book. You'd be like, listen, it, it doesn't really matter. Just sell the book. You're not, the marginal pro or con is not there. Is that about right? Yes, that's exactly right. And I think another thing that's important to note is that if you're going to sell exclusively through your website, you also have to be willing to invest quite a bit up front because you have to order copies of your book, meaning you have to print them. So, I mean, if you're printing 500 to 1,000, you're looking at maybe two, $3,000. And for somebody who's just starting out, they may not have that money. And that's a good thing about KDP is that they're print on demand. POD services means that when somebody buys your book, Amazon prints it, and ships it. You don't have to worry about printing. You don't have to worry about order fulfillment, shipping and handling, none of that. KDP takes care of all of it. That's why their cut is so hefty. 
And that means they have a big engine in the background. There's some humans, little gerbils, and I say that in an honorable way, doing something. It's not all just AI and automated. They have a whole engine, probably like warehouses around the world doing some version of that, I'm assuming, or maybe not. They do. They have warehouses all over the U.S. I'm not a huge fan of the printers because I like high quality. Amazon print, their printers are not high quality. Not really. But they do have human eyes that review your book before it goes live. That's not bad. Okay. It's good to know. Okay. Um, another thing, let's talk about this bestseller. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to ask you a political question. Let's get into politics here. Okay. <laughs> the <laughs> politics are this. Uh, and I was talking about this with another uh, a colleague of mine whose name will remain nameless because you're in the world. You may know them. But the point is, is this people like me, my book, Celebrity CEO, was category exclusive on Amazon as bestseller. I run with it, no shame, no matter what you say. I run with it mm -hmm. that it was a bestseller, and I can give context on Amazon and all that. Is that okay, Portia, or is it like Ramon? No, if it wasn't New York Times, Wall Street Journal, or Business Week, or Bloomberg saying you're a bestseller by now, Ramon, we're all bestsellers, so uh, I don't know. Or can you say, no, go forth, you may use it, or some version of that. Talk about this bestseller. What does and what doesn't it mean? This is always a painful topic because people don't usually like what I have to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. So I am not a fan of Amazon bestseller because so many people can get it so easily. And that's why so many different services say, we'll get you Amazon bestseller. Mm -hmm. Any independent publisher that comes up to you and say they're going to help you with their book, that's what they say they can do for you. Why? Because it's super easy. I'm going to tell you how you do it. All you got to do is choose a category that's super niche, right? Not a lot of competition in that space. Amazon resets its bestseller every one hour, every hour, right? Now it does have a 24 hour period. I will let you, you know, 24 hour period, yes. But it's being calculated every hour. So all you have to do nice. is get enough people to sell enough books in that 60 minute window. Congratulations, you're Amazon bestseller. Now, I'm not saying don't use it because people don't know this, right? If your audience isn't in the publishing space, they're going to hear, oh, I was a number one mm -hmm. international bestselling author. It sounds amazing. Now, I know that for me, it's not that big of a deal, but your audience are going to be like, wow, that's so cool. And so you can run with it if you want to, but it doesn't mean much to me. Portia, can anybody who qualifies with pure number be a New York Times or Wall Street Journal bestseller and or you can sell 20,000 copies, a million copies and still not be that? Or is it simply pure, relatively scientific numbers game if the algorithms detect and you sell it to the right places that you reach X numbers in a certain amount of time? Yep, you'll get it. Or is it a little more nuanced like that, like winning a food award? The food could taste good, but the chef just, they didn't like it that day. Can you help us unpack yeah. this New York Times, Wall Street Journal bestseller thing? So it's a little bit of both, right? It is nuanced in the sense that there's a lot of different qualifications that you have to satisfy in order to be considered, but it still is a numbers game. So you have to sell, I think last time I checked, it was 10,000 copies in a weekend, but it's not in one area. It has to be geographically spread out in different districts and different industries. So if you sell 10,000 in this widespread location and those stores are reporting their numbers to the New York Times, then the New York Times will take a look and consider whether or not you qualify. So there are people who offer it as a service, but it's like insanely expensive. Yes. You're like, oh, 50 grand, I'll get you New York Times bestseller. You know, so it's... Um, it's, it's a lot more nuanced. And for me, it's a, a bit more prestigious. So that's something that I'm shooting for. I don't care to shoot for Amazon bestseller, but New York Times, yeah, count me in. Got it. I love it. I love it. What haven't I asked you, Portia? What haven't I asked you? I know I haven't asked you a lot of things, but let's go back to basics. Those are some things on top of my mind. Talk to the average Joe or average Mindy or average Koame. Take your pick. And let's talk to us okay. about this aspect of publishing the book and then marketing the book. I'm sure you've done this in your sleep. Let's talk, maybe if we can, start with publishing, yes. even though I already know one who's authored five books, the marketing and the plan is important as well, which we'll get to. But publishing it, for those who don't know, they, they have a book inside them. I was talking to a lady, her name is Lisa. Hey, Lisa, I'm talking about you. And uh, and I she has a book inside her, you know, all about retirement planning and more, or her colleague does. So 
where does she start? She, she's she's got the IP. She's got the knowledge. Some a few things I hear, Portia. And I know I'm throwing 47 questions at you, one breath. But a few <laughs> things are, everybody has a book on this. Everybody has a book on that. However, I'll give you space. Just talk to that person wondering yeah. if they should write a book. They have a book inside them. Feel free. The yeah. mic is yours. I think it's all rooted in where your area of expertise lies and the story that you have behind that area of expertise. Because yes, there are 50 million books on a particular topic, but that doesn't mean you don't write on that topic because you have a journey or experiences that you've had that gave you the knowledge that you've obtained. That story is what's gonna make your book unique. So definitely go for it. Now, people tell me that all the time, I have a story in me and I'm like, that's awesome. How will your story help the people who are supposed to read it? Forget about you. It's never about you. I love you. You're an amazing person, but it's not about you. What are your readers going to get out of this? How will your story help them? And how will your, your expertise help them? And do you have enough knowledge to give it to them? So I'll give you an example. I felt like, yeah, man, I'm dope, okay? I'm a really good expert in my space. I consider myself an independent publishing expert. So I figure, let me write the book on it. I'm doing it in my coaching. I'm doing it everywhere else. I can write a book. <sighs> then it occurred to me that I did zero research hmm. behind information that I claim to have. So I took six months and I journeyed down literary history to figure out why books are so impactful. And I did. Now, as I was writing the book in which I claimed to be the expert, I learned so much mm. about book reading and the way books transform our minds and our lives. And then I could use that information in the book. Well, I think people who are open-minded and people who are selfless will have the opportunity to create a truly impactful book that changes the lives of their readers. Because if it's about you, it's not going to go anywhere because nobody cares. They don't know you they have to get something out of it for them. So you have to be selfless. Um, so if you're just starting out, definitely you wanna ask yourself two questions. Number one, what is your area of expertise? And number two, what problems do people have in that particular area that you can solve? Because that's what your book is gonna be about. The world's most impactful books are simply solutions to the problems that people have. I can see you're good at what you do. One more time, Portia, give us your website name, the name of your business and how people can work with you. Uh, we're not finished yet, by the way, but I like to do this every now and then so people know. You know, people forget. So please tell us one more time. Yeah, you can go to PortiaSteel.com. Portia spelled like the car, P-O-R-S-C-H-E, Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E.com. And the name of my company is Mystique Rose Publishing. Mystique not spelled like the word because it's my middle name, M-Y-S-T-I-C-Q-U-E, Rose Publishing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Who should see you and who should not see you, Miss uh, uh, Portia? Who should, who should, you know, go by your website and browse things and who should not? Yeah. Who should are business owners and aspiring thought leaders. These are, these are individuals who definitely want to use their books in their business. They want to find ways to leverage and monetize their books to reach more people. And maybe you're aspiring to be a professional speaker or you're already a professional speaker. This is definitely for you. We're creating thought leadership books that are meant to change the world. Who shouldn't see me? People who just want to write books about their lives. That's not me. That's not my space. Unfortunately, it's because unless you're an influencer or celebrity, people just aren't going to care. And it's too hard to convince somebody that the story isn't powerful. But well, let me push back against that, Portia. I mean, I grew up in Harlem and abused by my mother and, you know, and uh, and I cut my hair every Friday over a white sink. I think it's worthy of a book. Chapter one, Harlem. Chapter two, hair cutting. Chapter three, eats Krispy Kreme donuts. Hmm. Chapter four, two adult kids. I can keep going. Ten chapters, books done. Obviously, it's a great it's, book. Why not? It's, it's definitely Netflix worthy, Lifetime movie worthy. I mean, I see it on HBO if you want me to. You think people are going to actually read that if they don't know you? Hmm. Would you buy that book from somebody you don't know? Yeah. No. So what's in it for the reader? What do hmm. they get out of it? Readers are selfish. They're supposed to be. Your job as an author is to just give the reader what they want, not toot your own horn or make you look good. It's not about you. You're not the only one reading it. They are. So what Got do it. they get? 
Love it. So Portia, I, I do not want to work with anyone, Portia. I have zero dollars. Um, what are some steps I can do? Obviously, I need to, I would think, unless I'm going to use bark and chalk, um, I'm going to use a computer keyboard to type some words. Got to be good words, et cetera. But walk me through what are some things. I know there's ISBN somewhere in there. I got to, I could, you, you mentioned Amazon Kindle. Maybe that's that's the easiest way right there. Everything's there. But can you give us some high level, 10 points, 20 points, three points for those who, the cheapest, cheapest, they want to spend zero money. They're going to go on Canva. And I'm saying it, you're not, probably do a busted cover, but I'll leave it at that side. Um, <laughs> but they want to do it themselves. They want to print it. What are some steps they could do right now? Start typing. What happens? How do, how can they, how can they do their own book and see a printed copy months later, weeks later in their hand by mail? What can they do? All right. Number one, write the book. Number two, use Grammarly to edit it. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll get it done. Okay. Number three, Use Canva to design your cover. Number four, get it formatted. You can use platforms like Draft to Digital. Hire somebody on Fiverr. Mm -hmm. they, they'll do it for like $50. It's not a lot. Get it formatted. Number five, upload it to KDP. KDP does not have a starting fee. Get it up there. Publish it. And put in all of your information. You'll click submit. It'll go live. Amazon will review it in 72 hours. And then voila, your book will be available on Amazon. Got it. And you can hit a button and have it shipped to you. It's not just on, not an ebook. It's, you can get a physical copy. Yeah, that's a physical okay. copy. Okay, got Same it, with got e it. okay. And then take it to the next level, Portia. Why should people work with Portia and her colleagues, independent book publisher, consultants, and others who help in this? What's the difference? You know, because we're in the world of Canva, right? I don't need a designer anymore. I can go to Canva and just as good as a New York Times logo. I say that in just, but you know, you get what I'm asking. Tell us the, the yes. Porsche difference and or speaking in general, using somebody almost as good as you because probably no one is just as good as you, but you get what I'm asking. <laughs> yes. Uh, ultimately, the one thing that I would love to say is that we always judge a book by its cover. Do not believe that cliche. It is a lie. We judge a book by its cover. So when you design a cover on Canva, people will see it and know that it was self-published. The name of the game is to create a book that looked like Simon & Schuster just went crazy on it. Yes. That's the goal. Because people like luxury. They like things that look good. And if they can see it and say, wow, I know I'm going to get so much value out of this, that is key. Another thing, we authors, we like to be in our heads, man. There's a lot of internal dialogue, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of personal objections that we throw up in our way to keep us from even completing the book or making the book as powerful as it should be. It's really important to have an expert who can work with you to understand your audience, understand what your audience needs from you, and help you actually provide that thing. Thirdly, marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody who releases a book without a coach will just say on social media, hey, I wrote a book, go buy it. They're going to Clubhouse. Hey, I got a new book. Here's the link, go buy it. Yeah. Double flash like, your you mic if you're going to buy it. Double, you forgot that part. Double flash your mic. If you're gonna Double buy flash your mic, exactly. Tap, 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 tap. If you want to get it, click the link at the top if you want to get it. Yeah, not too many people are going to do that. But you can't properly market your book if it wasn't designed the right way, mm. you know? It's really important that you have experts that can help you walk you through that and teach you the things that you don't know. One thing I like to tell people is that it may be quite expensive for you if you're just getting started, but when you work with somebody on your first book, you're probably not going to need them for the second book. If they're a good coach, that taught you everything you needed to know. So when you move on to book two, three, and four, you know the process. You don't need to pay anybody to assist you with the coaching aspect. Always pay for production, though. I would just drop that in there. Mm -hmm. And Don't unless you want to hire the coach, like a person like Portia, and she has other services where you can hire Portia's EAs to help implement everything that Portia said if you just don't want to do it, people like me, because I just wouldn't want to do it. So that's a, I, I, a business idea for you. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, listen, you join me and I'll teach you. And that's the premium, right, teaching. But then, hey, I'm working on my seventh book. I already know what to do now, Portia. I just need somebody to get it done with your methodology. Absolutely. That's, it. And that's how we do it. I mean, okay, that's okay. what I'm a book coach, but Mystique Rose Publishing is a service provider. So we take care of all the uh, editing, okay, the cover okay. design, the formatting, the publishing, and the marketing. Got it. Love it. Um, uh, yes. And then let's dive into the marketing. So is it fair to say, Portia, that the, the book publishing part, 
relatively well well maybe not i was going to say it's more of a tactical thing and that's a smaller portion of a full successful book that's question one let me pause is that a fair point meaning it's a like graphics design there's not so much headspace in it except for the inside of the book unpacking the story that's where it takes emotion and headspace but you you tell me if i'm right or wrong um mostly you know i'm when you and that's why it's important to have experts because even from the design of the cover there's a lot of market research that goes into how you design the cover of your book yeah. how you come up with the title of your book the blurb so that you point. have like when your book is posted to amazon they'll give you a little preview on the inside so which pages are going to show up in that preview that's going to make people want to buy so mm. marketing is actually done during the writing process and of course during the production process Ooh, i love that marketing is done during the writing process and during the production process wow that is powerful i love it i love it i love it okay good 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 so good to know so let's turn the page then uh, uh portion again so good to having you with me today thanks for being here about marketing the book the book is out or as i think i know before the book even comes out a lot of work to be done what are some things yeah. to marketing a good book to being a a maybe almost new york times bestseller or you know what make it easier Forget even the number, if that's okay for now. Just you did your very best with what you had and tools and a toolkit to market a book. How do we market our book, Portia? What should we do? Um, first and foremost, you have to really figure out your launch strategy. Okay. So many people just release their books and they don't launch. And I think that's a problem. So in the space that we're talking about, we're talking about business owners and entrepreneurs, right? These people have businesses that the book should be used in. So one of the best strategies is to create a funnel around your new book, all starting with the launch. So when you launch the book, you host this amazing event like a summit and you invite amazing people to speak like Ramon Ray. And then you sell all of these copies of your book and you get clients at, at, from the event and you funnel them into your program. So not only are you transforming lives from the people who are reading the book, but people attended your event and now they become clients. And you can just kind of take them through whatever that funnel looks like. So there are 13 ways, 13 ways to monetize your books. So just another way to say it, there are 13 streams of income for every book that you release. And every book release should earn a minimum of $10,000. If you're not earning 10 grand from a book that you release, then you're probably not hitting all those monetizing strategies. I launched my book August 19th. By September 19th, that was in 30 days, I had earned $30,000 in revenue. It wasn't from book sales, of course. It was, I had I sold about 70 books, right? But then I got clients, right? Mm. That's all about leveraging your book and your business, getting those clients. So I had four clients that paid for my premium packages because of the content of the book and because of the launch that I did. And the biggest thing, of course, which we, I don't want, you know, I'm not bragging here, just speaking of full humility, is you get to talk with Ramon Ray again, and this is going to be blasted to like 10 billion more people in all humility. You know, I mean, that's the biggest thing you got. I mean, just... About facts, though. That's, that's, that's real. <laughs> I know, but I'm just teasing <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it's true. Sure. So the relationship building from that, because I was on your launch, you know, your summit and hearing you, I mean, we, we knew of each other and all that, but I'm like, oh, wow, this, this, this uh, woman is, is like first class. So really, I mean, you get in relationships building. I've done the same thing. Been with people and, you know, nobody knows you until they know you, which is fair. I don't blame anybody for not, not, not paying attention to me. I don't take it personal, but they didn't know me. And then they're like, oh, wow, Ramon. Let's do business. We're good. So yeah. So I think there's so many multiple, and I like how you framed it. It's not necessarily. I, I do again. I do think for the big dogs of the world, Oprah and and many others like that. You know, top thought leaders. They can probably just hit a button. Seth Godin, my friend, his email list is one of the biggest in the world. He can probably just go boop. He'll sell a million like that. Um, right. You know, or thousands. But I think that you're. I like how you framed it. You have the book, but then from that, what are your? Uh, do you get consulting gigs? Do you get speaking gigs? And and does it keep going? right? Because people then remember you and et cetera, and uh, it grows from there. So what are some of those revenue streams, 13 revenue streams, what are two or three or four or five that we can think of? And yeah, I think actually you mentioned them, consulting, book sales, anything else that may come to mind that we should consider? Online courses. I think it is really lucrative to turn your book into an online course. Very powerful. A masterclass or a mastermind, right? I know there are two completely different things, but I think it's really important to be able to take the content from your book and turn it into short form content that you can kind of space out over time. 
that has been really powerful for me and it actually worked in my favor. Um, speaking, I, man, just being able, being able to say that you're an author, people bite, especially podcast hosts. They're like, I want an author on my show. So from the speaking engagements that I've had, the shows that I've been able to go on, the people I've been able to collaborate with, they haven't even read the book yet, mm. but it was because I wrote a book on a particular niche and I proved that I was an expert in this thing. It got me all of these engagements. So that's a really great way to bring in additional revenue stream, especially if you're an aspiring professional speaker. Um, what else? We got book sales, online course, masterclass, that's workshop. Mm -hmm. Workshop. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can leave to get the other to get the other thirteen minus three minus thirteen, whatever the number, talk to Portia. She'll, she'll give you the rest of it. <laughs> so yeah, no, but I just want people to see there's many ways you could do this, and I guess that's why having the plan and doing it is so important. Um, there's another um, uh, mystery here, uh, Portia, that people have said that that most books that people do get they don't read. I mean, if I have I have a whole stack of books here that I want to read, I haven't gone through it. Is that true, Portia? And, you know, is that true? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, absolutely. People get books that they don't, I have, I have books on my shelf that I want to read that I haven't read yeah. yet. Um, but I think that's the power behind audiobooks. Yes. Um, a lot of books on my shelf that I have not cracked open is because I listened to the audiobook and then I bought the physical copy later just because in case I want to go back to it, uh, if I just remember something, I want to relearn something. I can't do that with an audiobook. You can't right. just go back to the section. But I got the physical copy of the book so I can go back. So, yeah. Got it. No, that makes sense. Portia, what else haven't I have, haven't asked you about? I know there's so many things, and I think part of these things like entrepreneurship, you can have a one-hour business about everything there is to create your business until you do it. It's going to take you weeks, months, whatever, you know, the nitty gritty, all those things. But anything that you haven't covered, you're like, Ramon, we haven't even touched on these two or three things at the high level, giving people a taste for what they need to do to publish a book and market a book. Mm, we didn't talk about copywriting. We didn't talk about ISBNs. We didn't talk about hybrid publishing. We didn't talk about editing. We didn't talk about how to come up with a good cover design. Okay. How to do the market research? We didn't talk about SEO. I'm sorry, I'm just dropping it on you. I, hey, me, listen, we're gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna pause this. I'm gonna go have dinner with my family, and then I'm gonna come <laughs> back and we'll uh, resume. You wait there. Uh, no, okay. uh, but let's, but let's dive into some of them at a high level. Those are about seven. I'm sure there's ten things we didn't get into, but we can talk longer, or uh, some of them we could talk longer. Or do you just want to kind of a high level ISBN? I know that's important. That's kind of like the book. Um, you know. Yeah, why don't you start talking about a few of those and how they're important or not? As much comes to your mind, just maybe walk us through a few of those things. Well, let's start with ISBN. Okay. ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number. It's basically the fingerprint for your book. Mm -hmm. It's the social security, social security number. number. That's what I was looking for, yeah. yes. <laughs> It's a social security number for your book. So when you create a book, you have to get an ISBN. You have platforms like KDP or Ingram Spark. These are all self-publishing platforms that give you an ISBN for free, or you can buy them. Now, in the United States, the only legitimate place to buy an ISBN is through Bowker, which is myidentifiers.com. That's the only website you can buy them. Now, when you have that ISBN, you have the option to put in the imprint. Basically, that's the name of the company that owns the ISBN. Whoever owns the ISBN owns the book. Um, I've worked with a lot of authors who are like, well, my publisher who I paid to help me, they provided my ISBN. And I was like, okay, well, then that means they own your book. You don't. Mm. And they were like, no, I read the copyright page and it said copyright my name. I said, I get that, but it doesn't mean anything. Because in the U.S., you are not legally allowed to transfer ownership of an ISBN. If that publisher goes under, all of those ISBNs are gone. There's nothing you can do about it. You cannot transfer ownership. So if you want to independently publish your book, you buy your ISBN yourself. If you get a free one through KDP, you are not allowed to print or sell your book anywhere else. It can only be printed or sold through Amazon. Let me guess, because they bought it for you and they own the book. Exactly. They own the imprint. There's nothing you can do. Got it. Okay. So what um, else? What are some other things? ISBN. Got it. Very important. Yeah. ISBN. We talked about, you know, go ahead and cover. You talked about editing manuscript, things like I'm just reminding you. Go ahead. And... Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the cover, um, just quick gem for mm -hmm. everybody. 
We talked about not designing your cover yourself, but you can conceptualize it yourself if you know how to do the market research. And this is the funnest and fastest way to do market research for your cover. Understand that cover designs actually follow a trend. They mm. change every two or three years. And you can just go to the New York Times bestseller list. Just Google it. New York Times mm. bestseller list. Find your niche and see the cover designs that are in that niche. And you will see that a lot of them follow the same type of style. Mm -hmm. So in the business development, nonfiction, I would say uh, financing space, the current trend right now is a very simple one color background with the text on front. No graphics, no images. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Atomic Habits by James Clear, my book, the CEO mm -hmm. author, you know, <laughs> you have, who else do we have? Um, find your why, Simon Sinek. I know that's leadership and not necessarily business, but yeah, it, they all kind of follow that trend. Um, some other niches, um, if you look at like personal branding or personal development type books, those are going to have like a single color background with maybe a graphic or two on the front and the text big and bold right there for you. So not too much going on. In 2018, when Michelle Obama dropped Becoming Man, pastel colors were in, okay? Pastel mm. backgrounds, yeah. pastel blue, the light pink. It was great. It was nice. Um, right now, memoirs are all about putting your face big and on the front. I think it all started with Viola Davis when she released her book. Mm. But now you see Jada has the same style. Will had the same style where it's their face, just their head, no shoulder, no full body, just the head and a very simple one word uh, book title. You said so, Jada? Just go to the hmm? You said Jada's book? Yeah, Jada. You mean like Jada games. and Will, like the thing that happened at the Oscars, like Jada, the, the couple? Like Yeah, them two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can go all on them. <laughs> Let's bring it back. Ramon, focus. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so cover. And then you mentioned maybe editing or manuscript, something layout. I don't know if you wanted to touch on that. Yeah, okay. editing. Um, so I think it's important for people to understand that you cannot and you should not edit your own book. The most powerful autocorrect software on planet earth is the human brain. Mm. Because when we write something, we know what is supposed to be there. So it's so easy for us to skip past a very small error. You're not gonna catch it. Mm. So it's really important to get somebody who didn't write the book to edit the book. Now there are different types of editing. There's developmental editing, copy editing, line editing, and proofreading. Those are the main four. Developmental editing is usually what happens when you first, when an editor first gets the manuscript. That's changing the structure, making sure there's continuity, making sure it's consistent and everything works and it flows and it makes sense. And you didn't say that a character had glasses in chapter three, but all of a sudden he got oh. glasses in chapter six. You know, <laughs> catching all of those things are very important. Then you have copy and line editing that kind of go hand in hand, but copy editing usually often is fact checking making sure your sentences make sense. Again, you know, going over the consistency, making sure everything is in place. And then line editing is tightening up the sentences. Does the sentence make sense? Is the structure nice and strong? Is the readability there, the flow, everything is perfect. Then you end with proofreading, catching all the typos and the grammar mistakes and the errors. If you go through those four rounds of editing, you're likely to have a flawless manuscript. But even then, even the most highly professionally edited manuscripts still could have up to four errors in it. And that is considered high level editing. Wow. Wow. And I, I know we went through this in about 37 seconds, but this is a process, everybody, a process. And I know, uh, just like you said, uh, Porsche at first, I can smell. And again, it could be self-published. I mean, this is what Porsche does. But I think what I'm hearing you say, it should look like it, right? You can sew your own clothes, but it should look like your grandmama just hemmed your pants and took you to church. It should look that way, right, Portia? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Thank you for saying it that way. That is, I'm going to use that analogy because it's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. You can make your own clothes, but people are going to know you made that yourself. That's right. You look, you see all the lump and the wrinkle in it and the, and the seam and everything else. Ah, come on. That's not so cool. But no, this was great, Porsche. I think um, this has been a great discussion for me. And I know that this will 
help many, many people. Of course, you're going to be liberally linked to this entire document, entire whatever the result of this is. But one more time, please let people know who you are, how you are, or they know that's not who you are, but how to reach you, your website, best website. So those who wish to work with Portia, Mystique Steele can work with you. Please, one more time, tell us your website. Thank you. PortiaSteel.com. Portia spelled like the car. P-O-R-S-C-H-E. Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E.com. The name of my company is Mystique Rose Publishing. M-Y-S-T-I-C-Q-U-E. Rose Publishing. I love it. And I'm Ramon Ray, publisher of zoneofgenius.com. If you liked this, please email me. Let me know. Be in touch. Ramon at RamonRay.com. Find me across the social channels. If you didn't like it, let me know as well. And uh, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, but I know this is great information. Portia always uh, drops uh, amazing science. She is the guru, the ninja of her space. You can tell that she flawlessly uh, delivered. So Portia, thank you for the time. And again, everybody, again, visit us at zoneofgenius.com for information on how we can help you grow your business.